Welcome to Enviro Close Up. I am Carl Grossman. With me is Dr. Judith Johnsrud and Dr. Donnell Boardman. Dr. Johnsrud is with the Sierra Club. She's the chair of the Energy Committee of the Sierra Club. You're a geographer, Judith. Why the interest of you as a geographer in nuclear technology? A long time ago, the United States exploded a nuclear bomb over the Pacific Ocean. And a hundred miles away, a Japanese fishing boat was so covered with fallout that the fishermen all became sick. At that time, the nuclear industry talked about sunshine units when they meant ionizing radiation. And it occurred to me as a geographer that there is a, a, a f geographic uh, totality to the production and the use of nuclear energy, whether it's for bombs or for electricity or any of our other purposes, and that the, the pathways of radiation in the environment affecting human beings and that entire system of production was a fertile ground for geographic investigation. And I've spent 25 years at it. And Dr. Boardman, you are the director of the Center for Atomic Radiation Studies. Kind of unusual for a doctor to commit so many years to uh, something beyond the practice of medicine, I suppose. <clears throat> yes, it really is, and it per perhaps it's uh, a matter of time. Uh, it, the question of uh, the human effects of ionizing radiation became a, pro a major issue about the time that I became 65 in 1978. And so uh, I was already uh, to retire from active practice and from uh, the pressures of my colleagues and was a free agent. My first concern with uh, radiation was back, went back to 1946 when uh, we learned of the bombing of Hiroshima at a time when uh, our, uh, my wife and my twins were uh, expected or recently delivered and we had a Japanese nurse. My wife turned to her and said, Mrs. Sakurai, aren't you from Hiroshima? And she said, yes. And as a result, we were alerted on a very human basis ever since. In 1978, I became interested in it again because the Physicians for Social Responsibility, then reactivated by Helen Caldicott, uh, had a newly uh, appointed tec uh, techno <coughs> technical uh, committee of which I was a member. And being a physician, I became interested as I studied a hundred different cases of atomic veterans that there were unique features about the pattern of disorder of these men which uh, did not fit the re regular pattern of uh, disorders that we saw in, in regular occupational medicine or in general medicine. Now you've done an awful lot of research in recent years. You've been putting together your research in a book. I've been spent the better part of 10, 12 years uh, writing and rewriting and revising and expanding the book. It started out with 30 pages and a handful of ref references in 1984. And now it's uh, uh, 207 pages with 250 peer-reviewed references uh, in the, of the scientific literature. Uh, most of what I've put together is the collection and the association of ideas of people who are far more experienced than I about the nuclear or the uh, uh, even the molecular uh, dynamics, but uh, no one, to my knowledge, has tried to put together the, uh, the effects of instant ionizing radiation of biological constant, uh, constituents uh, to what happens in the biological response, which occurs over a period of anything from moments to decades or generations later, these biologic responses are fairly nonspecific, but they have a pattern and when you sit, take a look at a lot of them that makes, that makes it, I, suggests an identifiable relationship, which we may talk about. Well, what is it about the consequences of radiation that most people aren't aware of, don't know about? 
I think the public uh, opinion that people have been given by, uh, by officialdom and by uh, high-powered po propaganda has been that uh, cancer, leukemia, genetic effects are the hallmarks of ionizing radiation uh, injury. The fact is that ionizing radiation can affect any biologic constituent, and the evidence in the, in the current scientific literature is very clear that every aspect of uh, the biologic makeup of the total is, uh, is vulnerable to ionizing radiation. What has been studied and reported upon has been epidemiologic studies of patterns that, uh, that those who wish to propagandize or to, uh, to uh, inform the public are interested in presenting because most of it will not most of it will not manifest itself for a period of ten years or more after the fact. The, the fact of ionizing radiation injury is that it takes place instantaneously in less than a millionth of a second, and that uh, the whatever else happens thereafter is a study of biologic response to a non-specific toxic influence. But radiation, because it has no respect to biologic uh, org organization or structure, will inevitably present patterns that are a little bit different than anything that's been seen before and will never be the same twice in two people. And Judith Johnsrud, energy chairperson of the Sierra Club, whither do we go with energy now? Intelligent people admit it when they've made mistakes. I think that our society hoped nuclear power could contribute positively. We now find ourselves with a morass of radioactive waste, with excessive cost, with aging reactors, with the potential for an accident comparable with that of Chernobyl. At the same time, we have a wide range of alternative sources of energy. And I think we're beginning to learn about conservation and efficiency as a more appropriate form of energy technology for us to depend upon. I'd like to think that we are heading now in the right direction and will turn from further dependence on nuclear power, give our attention to the management of the wastes, and move on to a positive, sustainable energy future. This has been Enviro Close-Up. I'm Carl Grossman. Thank you for watching.